<clears throat> so that means... Quit clearing your throat, Deeb. All right, we got a green light. Here we go. Get the All right, everybody. Good morning. That is not the new opening of the show, but I thought I'd share that video with you guys. We have a new vlog on our channel, uh, on the Bid Nerds channel, YouTube channel. Uh, it's about the menthol uh, slant nose 911 that you just saw there. It was. Uh, it's a little chronicling. Is that a word? It's definitely not a word. But uh, we did a we did we made a little film about uh, finding that car and putting it back together and making it as you saw there. That car is it, it, we uh, the plan for that car was to put it on bring a trailer or cars and bids or something. Um, but uh, someone bought it before we even get a chance to to do that. And uh, so I but I still wanted to finish that film and put it out there. So we thought we'd share just a little piece of that. Go check that out um, on the YouTube channel today that video is there it's a little, it's a little extra bonus video for you good morning everybody uh my name is john <laughs> polnick i'm the host of bid nerd your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids bring a trailer and all the other automotive enthusiast auction sites along with my partner michael deeb good morning sir how's san francisco treating you today san francisco is good and chronicling is a word that you you did fine mm. don't second guess yourself on a monday just oh, do it with no. conviction I need more coffee even you if you go down and that shit I think if we get a chronicle anything, I, I'd say that you're going to step back and look at the whole thing here and say, you still sold it too soon. <laughs> you should have kept I agree. Car. I agree. You I that love car that four car. Months. Absolutely. That car. I mean, JP, look, I've said this to you many times before. It's a compliment into itself because you always personalize your cars. But that damn thing was absolutely you. That car was that car was more you than almost anything you've owned. And you've had some doozies. But that car, I think you're going to look back, you know, five minutes after today's show and be like, damn it, Deep was right. I should have kept that car through the summer. Already second guessing it, man. Uh, oh. It is. That car was very me. Old, kind of busted, leaking in a few places, uh, missing parts, and generally stupid. Uh, loud, and, and loud, head uh, turning, obnoxious, unforgettable. Yeah. <laughs> you can't unsee it. Never uh, seen anything like it before. I could go on and on. Oh, that car man. looks so you. And yeah. man, does it look good in all those uh, shots and the footage that you and Mikey and Lee got. That thing is I, – I, I was – you know, it's funny. I think I was actually like in town, but I wasn't there that day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, boy, that car. Oh my God. It was so much fun. That was the only time I really got to drive it at all. Uh, because yeah. well, I drove it to cars and cafe and then coming home from cars and cafe, the clutch cable snapped or something or stretched <laughs> out. Um, so I had to bring it back to the shop and have that replaced and they replaced it. And then immediately the thing went on a truck and was shipped, uh, to Colorado. Uh, the new owner of the car is a really cool guy. He owns two other slant noses. He has a slant nose coupe, <laughs> a slant nose convertible. Yep. And yep. now he has a slant now nose. Slant nose <laughs> yeah and uh so but he is one of those guys that's like hey you can come and visit at any time come up to colorado oh, we'll go for a drive that's so i'm just great. like yeah i'm taking him up on that uh we are definitely right. going to see that car again that is see, not the last time season we two of porsche road trip featuring the bid nerds mm. is going to be awesome we've already got stops for days right so we're going to colorado to see your slant nose yeah. we're going to what is it wisconsin or something for that big porsche like uh, what's the guy's got the field full of old Porsches that are sort of for sale, but not for sale. What's that? Oh, place that's in about? Wyoming. Yeah. Wyoming, that not Wisconsin, guy, yeah. the other W state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got to go to Wyoming. I mean, we got to go out to Hershey up. and see if uh, we can go to yeah. Porsche. Uh, well, so they don't call it the Hershey swap meet anymore. They call it no, it's the, like officially else. a PCA swap meet now or something. Right. So late. Right. Isn't that coming up like any minute now? Yeah. It's in a month or two. It's like in May or something. The end of May between May and June. I actually don't know. Got to go look it up, but it is coming it up might be the end of april so i don't yeah. know pack your bags man do your you know yeah. clean your underwear or something will you? it's true yeah have you ever been to hershey hershey pennsylvania no. it no, literally I've smells only... like chocolate bars it's weird 
You're kidding. Is Hershey yeah. the Hershey? Like that? Yeah, it's, it's that. Town. Yeah, you walk, you oh, roll in there man. as you're coming down in the hills because it's all rolling hills in, in you know, the sure. middle of Pennsylvania. And you just get that smell and you're like, what the hell? And it's just, yeah, it's permeating. It's everywhere. It's crazy. Um, well, that, that's that's bizarre. No, I've only been to Philly with uh, Jeff Hartley mm, and right. uh, up to of, up to visit Fab Speed in North, like, I don't know, Upper mm. Dublin, Ambler, somewhere north of Philly. Uh, is where the home of Fab Speed is. Very cool facility. Very nice people. What's up, Fab Speed? You went to you went to Philly. Dan's or Gino's? Oh, uh, I don't remember what it was because it was so long ago. But we went to one, and that was the one he swore by. So that's whatever it was. That's the one I went to. There you go. But I can't remember. It was delicious. Wait, wait. I ordered a Philly cheesesteak everywhere we went the whole time I was there. That is like yeah. my favorite food in the world. I'm an idiot, but you know whatever. Something about the East Coast, they have the superior junk food uh, to the yes. West Coast. Oh my God, yeah. Well, because their junk food's made from real food, it's just done in a fast fashion. Uh, whereas our junk food out here is like you, you you take it to a lab and they can barely find food in it. You know, mm, yeah, that's probably it. All right, well there you go, guys. There's a little update. Uh, you're going. What are these two yahoos talking about? What do we do on this cheese channel? Cheese steaks. Yeah, cheese steaks. That sounds great. Uh, Wit Wiz. Uh, here's uh, the thing. We don't talk about cheese steaks. This is not a food channel. This is not a cooking show. Uh, oh, right. We nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day and all these automotive enthusiast auction sites that have popped up everywhere since Bring a Trailer, showing everyone how it's done. Uh, yeah. So what I, we do is I, we. I, oh, go ahead. I think one just opened since we started the show. There's a new yeah. one that just came yeah. online. Yeah, it's like every Starbucks minute. in China. Every 48, 42 <laughs> minutes, there's a new auction site. <laughs> uh, Gross. That's actually a real, or at least it was uh, a real friend, stat. Yeah, that was a real stat. Our friend um, Kelly Smith from Haggerty. Kelly, I was gonna say. Uh, yeah. He ran the whole shebang, kit and caboodle in China, and he uh, he came on our earlier podcast the dirt or die podcast you can check those out at dirt uh i think I those are that. great by the way yeah, those are really you. great we dirt had a lot of fun with awesome. those man yeah those, those were good we're gonna bring and some of those evening, back they had an evening vibe where we're like you know two shock jocks on a channel that nobody listens to in the morning yeah. the, there was something smooth you know like love lines uh, about the dirt studio in yeah. the evening that was cool yeah yeah we got to bring that back um so anyways uh there it is so we nerd out about the most interesting cars of the day on these auction sites and we, you know we don't just like talk about the facts and figures and what makes the car interesting we also make predictions as to what we think they'll sell for what will the number be when the hammer hits the sound block well yep. we make those predictions and we keep track of it and the first thing we do is quickly go Go over those numbers uh, from the previous show, and uh, we check ourselves as we wreck ourselves. Yes, that's the only thing I could think of that rhymed. That's let's a good one, go, though. Let's go Beastie Boys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah uh, we could always rock Beastie Boys. We, sure. we're, we're qualified for that. JP, mm. I would say last week might have been the closest week we've had, uh, you know, uh, against each other. Uh uh, it, was a, Friday, it was a it was a straight up draw, wasn't it? Didn't we get uh... just a bit, yeah? I'll explain why. I'll give you I'll give you the details and the facts. Okay. Uh, remind me again, which uh, we, didn't we do the '94 Porsche Speedster, the '964 Gen Speedster, Speedster was the car of the day, yeah. Car of the day on Friday, the second of April. Uh, that car was on Bring a Trailer JP. Uh, it had a few miles on it but it was triple black and it was in really nice condition and uh you and i were pretty close we were all actually all over this thing um we both lamented how uh the 964 gen of the speedster doesn't get the love that the g does. uh but this is your car in every way and you even let our audience know in the most nerd out fact of all time that the bespoke chopped windshield and accoutrement to create the 964 generation speedster was created while the g body was still in production and to help sell g bodies to get them off the showroom floor in and make way for this new generation of car porsche decided to make a special model with the parts they had already created for a future model of the 964 and they slapped them on the g body and so uh, that's an interesting fact that it was almost reverse engineered from a chronological standpoint uh so there's your word uh used right back in your face so <laughs> blah 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 a really neat car uh it's cool to see those recaro seats um it's hard for me to wrap my brain around those being uh dot legal uh but jp assures me that those were the correct seats for the car even in our market um these cars have conventional coil spring suspension so they handle amazing and they've got a little more power uh these are lightweight and almost exclusively narrow body uh john correct me if i'm wrong on that right no wide 100%, 100%, body 100 100 exclusive no uh, wide so body. just a really neat car because this is a true lightweight for the 964 
Uh, yet they don't bring the crazy money. And so even this being triple black and fair miles, I thought it might break 140. You took the over probably because you love it so damn much. This car is all you. Might be your favorite car of all time. You said 145, Deep. Uh, this car made it to $139,000 on the auction on Bring a Trailer, but it failed to sell at that number. This car did not find a home, and we suspect you will see it on you know, Auto Trader or Hemmings or somebody's lot uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this car remains available, uh, but I was the closer of the two, so I won that one. Uh, then we jumped over to Cars and Bids to look at a 2001 Dodge Viper. Uh, this was an ACR uh, in a really interesting and kind of, at least for a Dodge Viper, a demure midnight blue metallic. Uh, how else would you describe that color, JP? That's uh, mm -hmm. a really toned down metallic color uh, on this wild coupe with uh, just a few little cool tidbits here and there. Stiffer suspension, BBS wheels, a little more horsepower. Uh, the recipe that you would use for a track-oriented, sort of a GT3-esque uh, version of the Dodge Viper. Um, it's hard to judge where the value are for these cars because the Viper crowd are fanatics. Uh, but as sports cars in the secondary market, they're not bringing a huge premium. So I said 73. You said 65,000. Uh, eight grand under my bid, and you were definitely the closer. This car sold at $63,000 on cars and bids. Um I would definitely say that your guess and that result uh, reflects the platform and that maybe that car would have brought more if it had been listed somewhere else. But I don't know. You know, it's hard to, how do you say, quantify these things. I think it would have brought more on BAT, but not a lot more. Really. Not a lot more. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No. And, and you might have still won at 67, you know, like that kind yeah. of thing. It might have brought a yeah. few more grand and you still would have won it. I, my bet was a little high, probably because I like the car. I, I you yeah. know, I know it's not your favorite car, but. If I had to have a Viper, I'd want something like that where there's been a little more attention to detail to make it a better driver's car. Yeah. P car market offered us a 1976 914 with a two liter out of Canada. This is a really neat car that was a dealer promotion for the C upcoming Sebring race in 1976. So it had a sticker and maybe one or two other silly things on it to make it a Sebring edition. But by all accounts, this was a two owner original car we're talking original paint this car hasn't been you know repainted uh, uh the battery box or what do they call it the hellhole jp was all in good condition this looked like a really nice example uh and i think if that car were in the united states it would have brought a premium now here's where we've got uh an interesting achilles this car is on p car market uh, which means it may not find the correct audience for an early air-cooled. The other thing is that PCAR allowed this consigner to set an unreasonably high reserve. So I said 38000 you said 37000 The car was bid to 33000 but didn't meet its reserve. And I would think that once you get into that, you know, above 30000 that's got to be, you got to be close to where this car is going to sell. Well, at 33000 this car failed to sell, and it, it remains in the deal tank on P car market for a buy it now price of $40,000. But with the deal tank, we know you can make an offer. So go by all means, go offer this guy whatever you think it's worth and see if you can corral a deal. Uh, but this seems to be. You know, sort of typical of P car market, an unreasonably high reserve. Uh, and now somebody's going to lowball the consigner for the next two weeks while it sits in the deal tank. It just doesn't seem like fun to me, but this is how they operate. There you go. Any thoughts on that, JP? Yeah. I mean, it just, this car was an East Coast car, wasn't it? Uh, no, can well, Canada, East oh, Canada, Canada, right? Yeah, I mean, Canada yeah, yeah. didn't help and everything. Usually cars that are on the East Coast, uh, that typically favors P-Car market just because I feel like a lot of people just literally go to their dealership and uh, check out cars there because they do have a dealership. But uh, I, yeah, this, I, I don't know, a four cell, a two liter, uh, and it is the big bumper car. So the, right. the 914s that bring the big money are certainly the ones, the the 70 to, you know, 74. Now, the 75 and 76 is uh, the bigger bumpers just for people just don't like i've always kind of liked the way they look but they are extraordinarily heavy uh so i think that's a big problem uh, yeah or at least yeah. The are. so anyways all right there you go the bid goes on as they say mm. uh jp let's jump over back over to bring a trailer we looked at a 1983 toyota sr5 4 x 4 that i picked for you uh ironically this car was out of oregon so not mm -hmm. too far from where you grew up uh, 170,000 miles on this bad boy. It is the four cylinder, but this was the smaller, I shouldn't say smaller, the uh, lesser spec carbureted version. Although the carb, this car has been swapped to a Weber. Uh, I still don't know if it's as reliable or as easy to use or as powerful as the fuel injected version of this. 
uh, for their model. Uh, and certainly the value wouldn't be there. If it's fuel injected, it would have bought a couple dollars more. But you and I both were thinking this was in the $70,000 range. I said 17 on the nose. Your bid was close, real close to mine at 17.5. Offering a trailer out of Oregon, this car was bid up to $15,000, but this was our third failure to sell the day. So interesting mm -hmm. afternoon for the online auction platforms as at $15,000, this car didn't find a home, which makes you scratch your head as to where bring a trailer allowed the reserve to be set. Like, my, my goodness, at 15 grand, does it take home an 83 four by four with a uh, Toyota SR5 with 170,000 miles on it and a repaint? That seems silly to me. Um, but anyway, I do hey, uh, and just, our... uh, just a quick moment there. Michael Deeb, are you hearing some static right now? Like some major static? No. Okay, good. Moving on. Good. Okay, good. Uh, and our final car of the day was also on Bring a Trailer. It was a 1974 Toyota 1000. This is a gray market car that was never sold in the United States. This is not built on the Corona or Corolla platform. Uh, this is a car that was sold. I can't remember where this car had been, JP. It was like South Africa and then Belgium and now in the United States. Just an interesting little 993cc four-speed manual I can't remember now if it was rear wheel drive or front wheel drive, but this is just a little sort of econo box, three door, four seat hatch uh, that is absolutely adorable. If that is a word you could use on the bid nerds to describe a car. Uh, but these early Japanese cars do, they're, they're, they kind of have like their own hipster cult following, sort of the same way little Italian micro cars and other micro cars from the European continent uh, have always had their own cult following. These cars, I think, are emerging in our marketplace. Uh, and they're pretty relatively easy to bring into the United States because in most states, they will be smog exempt. Uh, so here's just another adorable example. And JP, you and I were all over it. Uh, listen to this. I said 12,000. You said 10,000. This car sold for 11,300. And on Friday... You wrote sold and put your name as the winner. But if you do the math, my friend, uh, I was uh, actually uh, closer. So I took that one back that you tried to steal from me. And that was an important one because at the end of the week, JP, I had 13 bids, one to your 12. However, on Thursday, the 1st of April, the 1987 Carrera on PCAR market, uh, you got a Yahtzee that I will remind you, you didn't even know you got. Mm -hmm. I uh, also corrected that error in math because you put the buy it now price and not the failure to sale price which was right on the money to your guess at sixty thousand dollars so your yahtzee means you got double the points which was the means of the week was a draw so that's as close as we get my friend not bad yeah the bid nerds don't know what they're talking about but they don't yeah. know what they're talking about equally uh we <laughs> yes, are exactly. we are Just evenly across the board <laughs> wrong uh he's no better at it than i am uh we both <laughs> suck at this uh so there it is guys don't listen to anything <laughs> we say <laughs> do not take our advice we are not professionals we do no research we pull everything we know out about these cars out of our derriere out of our yeah. rear end that is the truth my dog yeah. knows more about cars than either one of us combined uh so there it is uh but we do have fun with this so that was last week's cars that was last friday's cars uh we yep. have a whole batch of new cars here for a monday uh so let's get to those before we do make sure you hit the subscribe the like yeah. and the notification buttons and give us some comments below tell us what cars you think you sh we should be talking about um and reviewing what do you think is the most interesting car of the day and on top of that let us know about our predictions let's hear your predictions people let's see what you got to say <laughs> You think you're any yeah. good at this? Come on, put some numbers down there. Let's just try to see if you're better at it than a couple of yahoos that clearly don't know what yeah. they're doing. All right, so let's get to today's cars. I, You know, today the big car of the day is a car that, uh, you know, I love, and I'm not sure if you love, uh, but uh, let's talk about this R8. I knew you were going to say that. That's of that's a good course, one, JP. Of course. Okay, so uh, I bought a GT3 in 2010, and I went up to Sonoma Raceway, and they have the Sim Racing School uh, where I took driving lessons so that I could take my GT3 out of the track and become a good driver. Uh, next to the Sim Racing School was the Audi Racing School, and they were running R8s. And everybody at the Audi School, at the Sim Racing School, said so the Audi R8 is actually an incredible track car. It's a fantastic car on the street. It 
It's like super easy to drive on the track. And by and large, that reflected uh, Audi's uh, sales success with this vehicle. Um, essentially, Audi owns and operates Lamborghini, and the Gallardo and the R8 are built on the same platform. This is perhaps the better street car, and the Gallardo uh, is maybe a 10 better track car. But this car was a huge commercial success for a lot of reasons. The Quattro all-wheel drive meant that you could get close to the limits of adhesion on your favorite back road and not get yourself in a lot of trouble like you could with a Dodge Viper or an early 911. Um, these cars came with uh, V8s and V10s, and they were offered with uh, either – uh, single clutch automatic gearboxes or manual transmissions. So our car, JP, is a 2008 Audi R8 with a six-speed manual and less than 40,000 miles on the odometer offered to us out of Laguna Beach, California. Uh, these cars have actually held their value pretty well, and they remain decent values in the secondary market. Uh, our car is painted Phantom Black Pearl. It is all-wheel drive. It does have the manual transmission. It boasts a really fun and very early, say, 997 GT3, like, uh, let me read it to you, 420 horsepower and 320 pound-foot of torque. Uh, think of a 997.2 standard GT3, and you're, you kind of get a sense of what that uh, power and torque and sort of weight will feel like when you get down the road in this car. Um, this car does have a blemish on the Carfax, apparently, at some point in its history, it was involved in some sort of incident that incurred minor to moderate damage to the car. Uh, but by all accounts from the photos, uh, the whatever repair work was done must have been done to an excellent standard because this car looks spectacular. Uh, boasting the optional 19-inch uh, wheels, here you go, JP. Uh, poor man's Lamborghini Gallardo or probably one of the best driving Audis ever to come out of Ignolstadt. Is that where Audi's from? Uh, what do you think, man? You like these things? Yay or nay on the R8? I'm a big fan of R8s. It's, it's like when there's so many different manufacturers that come out with cars and they make the claim, oh, we're finally coming out with a car that's going to be a 911 killer or it's going to be a nine. It's going to compete with a 911. I mean, you know, Aston Martin with their Vanquish, you know, we're like, oh, we're finally coming out with a car that, that's going to make people consider this car over that car or Mercedes and their GT. I mean, they all do it, right? Yeah. This is the only company that I think has ever successfully done it because the R8 is genuinely a competitor, I feel like, to a contemporary 911. I mean, a 2008 911 isn't worth nearly as much as an R8 uh, because they just made so many more of them and the, and the R8s are a lot more, I don't know, call it exotic. But when they were, when yeah. they were both brand new, um, they were about the same price. And I mean, the R8, uh, by the numbers, is a better car. And the R8, I mean, in a lot of ways dare I say, is the better car? Is this, this is kind of like if they took a Boxster and stuffed a Cayenne engine in it and, you know, and went nuts. Um, you know, it's, I, I really, really yeah. love these things and I like them in the V8 configuration. The V10 wasn't available uh, yet when this car was brand new and um, is as great as the V10 is. Uh, I think the V8 offers an amazing value because they certainly don't hold their, uh, they're, they're not worth nearly as much as the V10 versions. Um, I love this yeah. car, and I love this color one, too. <clears throat> Picture this, JP. Uh, your friend Michael Deeb is 39 years old. He's coming up on his 40th birthday. Um, I was making really good money and uh, didn't own a home, so I was paying like an obscenely low amount in rent and could afford a, a car payment to get myself a, a real, you know, kind of track toy, supercar sort of thing, and I was shopping. And I kept in mind uh, 911 GT3, uh, Nissan GTR and the Audi R8 were the three cars I was considering buying. And the GTR, uh, while it had extraordinary performance, uh, wouldn't make me a better driver. And the Audi R8, uh, for how cool it is, and knowing that I'm kind of a closet Audi fan, uh, seemed like a really cool car. But to look at it on the road and see it in the movies, it was so supercar-ish that it was almost cartoonish. And I thought, it just it looks like a midlife crisis car and i just didn't want something that like had this pretension of being a supercar and so the audi uh, the porsche gt3 made all the sense in the world with the mesker engine and rear wheel drive and the rear engine i was like this is going to make me a 
better driver. It's an incredible track car. Uh, they hold their value pretty well. I mean, it, it, I, I considered the three cars for about five minutes, but it was very easy to focus in and say, I'm buying myself my first Porsche, and I bought a GT3. And, uh, and I absolutely loved that car and regretted selling it from the moment I let it go. So uh, I love the Audi. It's a cool car, but it's just, I don't know. At that time, it was just too silly for me. 40 years old, living in San Francisco, driving a supercar. It was just like, no, I, I can't live with that reputation. So that's I walked not, away. That's not the only story I've heard like that. Uh, I, I'm not going to name names, but I have a very good friend of ours that, uh, that yeah. bought a V10 version. Uh, and yeah. he brought it home. I'm not even going to say where he lives, but, uh, he, you know, he's a professional yeah. guy, uh, married with a kid already, you know, and he, yeah. just a very, very successful guy in his own right, but also the son of someone yeah. who is unbelievably successful. Let's call him, we'll just sure. say he's a billionaire, right? Or a bajillionaire. Yeah. Um, yeah. And his father saw the car and was like, you, you can't own that car in this town. What are you doing? And his yeah. father yeah. is also a car guy, a guy who races Porsches, who knows how to drive, uh-huh. you know, skip barber champion, blah, 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 blah. But he's like, no, that, right. that's too much here. You need to go ahead and uh, get something else. So he traded in yeah. and got a Boxster S uh, of the same year. Uh, so, yeah. or yeah, so it's pretty amazing. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the R8s really do have a lot of flash uh, for a price that, that doesn't, White, you know, I mean, it's. I, I think it's the best bargain when it comes to supercars. Where it, is this car going to land? It really is, JP. And like I said, I just in San Francisco owning a car like that, it's just like, I mean, it's like birding everybody, you know. And I was like, I can't drive that car this time, no way. So I just didn't even consider it. But JP, our car that seems ridiculous in- to me. San Francisco, there's supercars everywhere and billionaires everywhere. I, I don't understand. Yeah, that, but, okay. but it's they're they're like a certain club, and and you know. The, the money, the, the wealth above San Francisco is so far above that you're just like, it's like you're not in that club. Like you can drive <laughs> a nice car, but you're not in that club. Like that, it's FU money in this town. It's crazy. Uh, JP, our car is at $69,000 last night. And with an hour and a half to go, it's still at $69,000. Uh, by all accounts, this should be an $80,000 car. It is on Bring a Trailer. It is in California, but it does have a little bit of damage. Uh, I had put 79 last night, uh, but reading the tea leaves today, I'm going to change my bid to $74,000 uh, and say that it will find a home, uh, but it's not going to bring full retail because there's this silly blemish on the Carfax, which is a bummer. Let's be Great clear. Value. It does the not have any damage. It does not have yeah. any damage, to be clear. No damage on yep. this car. It right. was had minor damage that was repaired, and that is yeah. reflected on the Carfax. I, I, yeah. I think we're seeing time and time again um, that this this myth that, that the Carfax, that a small accident on the Carfax makes a big deal. I, I think people are... Are, are seeing through that BS. I mean, Carfax has made so much money and screwed so many people by getting them all freaked out over a stupid little I, thing. Um, this car I, is, I, huh? I agree with you, but not a hundred percent. So like, I think in the, let's say the old days, right? Like 10, yeah. 10 years ago, eight years ago, maybe the Delta was like 30%. I think the Delta now is like 10 to 15%. So it's better, but it's not a free pass. If there's a blemish, I think there's going to be a, a concession made in the value. Unless the car has been uh, totaled or is a theft recovery or was salvaged of some sort, I think Carfax is simply a club that dealers use to F people. (laughs) I mean, I'm not kidding. It's complete bull crap. Absolutely. Uh, You know, screw you, Carfax. It's a Um, tool. Yeah, for sure. And and, and people buy into it and they're like, okay. And I mean, it's like, it's just that big triangle just scares people so badly. I I really think, and it's the same triangle as they have for like a a salvage. It's so absurd. Yeah. There's a Uh, difference between disclosure and defamation. And I agree with you that, that Carfax is blurry the line between those two uh and they have for a long time and the dealers absolutely use it as a tool to rip cars and make a profit and rip people off and make a profit yeah uh, not right. just yeah so just to be clear all right so this car i'm taking your bit i'm taking 79 i i think okay. it's uh, black on black with a manual in california all the under this forty thousand miles yeah yeah this yeah and that's the other thing too um yeah, I really want one of these one of these days. Uh, I, one of these is going to wind up in my parking oh, garage. Man. I see it happen. JP, I'm telling you right now, you put an exhaust on that thing, you yeah. will think you have gone to heaven. It's a yeah. it's a great – that 4.2 liter V8 was basically the same block that was in our little Audi wagon that Esther used as a mm. dog kennel on wheels. I mean, <laughs> the, the mom wag or whatever she mm. called it, dog wag. The only wag. thing that sounds know. better is a 10-cylinder, so there you go. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that. All right. Thanks for uh, bearing with us, That's guys. A good, uh, good car. 
Hey, guys, if you're out there and you're watching the show live, if you're hearing some static, can you put that in the comments? Uh, because we, we I'm getting a lot of feedback, and I don't yeah. think it's going to the feed. But sorry to, Mark, to hit you guys Mark, with text me and stuff. tell me if you hear the static, will you? Mark right. is watching. Mark also said that uh, – let me read it to you, JP – because we were incorrect, although Beastie Boys did say it. Uh, Ice Cube said, check yourself before you wreck yourself first. So Ice Cube gets the credit for writing it. Beastie Boys uh, just used it. So there you go. Nice. All right. Uh, we don't know anything about hip-hop either. Okay, so what's the next card? Yeah. We've, got, uh, we've got some really... Mark, I, huh? Mark, look at us. Do we know anything about hip-hop? <laughs> I'm a really good basketball player, though. Okay, so uh, let's let's go. Uh, speaking of cars and with cars that have engines in the back, let's go check out what they got for sale over at Picar Market. I'm kind of into this car too. Today. Oh, Picar Market! All right, we're going uh, 1982 Porsche 911 SC. This is a Euro car with a wide body kit. Now these are authentic steel uh, 930 flares that were welded onto this thing. But essentially, what we're looking at here, JP, is somebody has taken a three liter SC and create kind of an IROC build with this car. Uh, look at the beautiful uh, sort of RSR finish on the Fuchs wheels. Look at that uh, molded uh, front end without the accordion bumpers and the oil cooler under the front wiper in the front. And even the Porsche to script, all of those scream IROC, uh, which was the international race champions that happened in 1974 that on ABC's wide world of sports. Uh, mm -hmm. JP, you and I are old enough to remember what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, and my favorite uh, tail section for any uh, 911 is still the Turbo Carrera wing, which is on this car. Uh, and it looks fantastic. This black paint job looks exceptional. There's a molded in roll bar there. Uh, and then the motor has been built. Uh, it's got, um, you know, there's some things done to the top end of this car. Uh, so my guess is that this thing is probably making 220, 230 horsepower. Uh, and as an early SC, even with the steel flares, uh, this is probably still, you know, right around a 3,000 pound car. Uh, so super neat car all the way around with the pea shooters sticking out the back. Take a look at this thing, JP. Is this a, this is a really nice build that you could absolutely drive on the street? Uh, what a great car and what a great value sitting there um, in Merchantville, New Jersey, with 132,000 miles on the motor and drivetrain, sitting at just thirty-nine thousand dollars with less than three hours to go. Uh, you could, I mean, for the money, it'd be hard to replicate a car with this much eyeball and probably this much fun to drive. Uh, JP, I would say in every way, this car rivals my authentic wide body as far as fun factor. Just looking at it, what a cool build. How about you? Yeah, the IROC is such a great look. Um, I had that same IROC bumper on the uh, on the SC wide body Targa slant nose that uh, we were uh, that I showed at the top of the show. Um, it, it, boy, those are hard to fit onto a car. By the way, uh, yeah, no, yeah. this car is exactly the way I would build something. Uh, you know, I don't think it's over the top. It's not crazy. It's just enough kind of nuts. Um, and uh, you know, I love the lack of the rocker panels um, on on yeah. this kind of iteration of the car. Uh, yeah, it, with the with the prototypo wheel and the uh, kind of the the racing uh, floorboards, they got rid of the yep. rear seat. Although I'm not a big fan of the big uh, speaker box in the back or whatever, yeah. this car just looks like it's a ton of fun to drive, and uh, it's my colorway, so I'm I'm down. Where uh, where's this car gonna land? Because it's not authentic. I mean, your car, your it's, ruby red car, is an M491. It's probably worth somewhere yeah. around eighty grand. Uh, this yeah. thing. It's got the IROC build. Is it going to bring that much money? Where do you think it's going to land? Yeah. If my car was, you know, not, didn't have clear coat peeling off of it and it was a little more, you know, better cosmetic condition, my car would be 80 grand. But by all accounts, my car should be like a, I don't know, $65,000, $70,000 car. This car, JP, as a build and in New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's worth $55,000. The trouble is, it was at 39 grand last night. It's at 39 grand this morning, and it's on P car market. Now, East Coast cars, especially in New Jersey, do really well. Mm -hmm. But do we expect that P car market is the place to sell an unusual air cooled, like an authentic air cooled? No, I think this car would bring 55, 60 on bring a trailer but I, it, it's this platform is so inconsistent like part of my brain wants me to change my bid to 50 grand but i'm just going to leave it there at 55 and say somebody appreciates it for what it is uh and i you know it it, it may be surprising but i'll just say 55 is where it's going to land g g give me your number jp I, I i'm so tired of betting on these guys or 
spinning on these guys because it's so hard. They're so inconsistent mm. on peak car. Yeah, I mean, trying to guess the number as to what this car is worth versus what it will sell for on peak car is just it's yeah. like putting a screw in your brain. Um, yeah, I'm going to bet the under just because uh, even though it's an East Coast car, uh, we also aren't seeing P-Car really bring the good money for air-cooled cars, even when they do. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to go under. I'm going to go 54. And, you know, I mean, at 39, will it get a oh, late-stage rally? I don't know. Tucked underneath me, you chicken I mean, it's just, I'm going to go, go 50. Yeah, I'm going to go right <laughs> under you because I don't know. Uh, it's the platform, 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 platform. Who the hell knows? This it is a platform. Here's the thing. If that were my car, I, I wouldn't even consider putting on P-Car. I would yeah, absolutely put nuts. that on, bring a trailer yeah. and, and get really, really good photos. I would I would hire J.P. Polnick hmm. and I would do uh, Lee Pettit and I would get the best marketing possible and i put it on, bring a trailer and get it to more eyeballs and more Porsche people than you'd find on P-Car. Uh, so good luck uh, to the consigner. I hope you get the money. But my guess is, JP, you and I are both wrong. This car winds up in the deal tank. So yep. that's my take. Yep. Because who knows? All right. Even, even if it does get bid to a number that makes sense, they probably let the consigner put a reserve yeah, that $75, doesn't. Yeah, so $75,000 reserve. Up, yeah, yeah, he thinks he's got a $100,000 IROC replica, and he doesn't. And, nope. and it's just insane. So we'll yep. see what happens. Uh, only time will tell. Uh, three hours of time, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, let's jump over to cars and bids. Doug DeMiro pulled a car that I had caught last week, and then I absolutely got it wrong. I thought this car was closing on Friday, JP. Do you remember I was <laughs> talking about this yeah. 1995 Chevrolet Impala SS? So uh, anyways, it, it closes today, I promise. In fact, it closes in 25 minutes. Uh, this car is offered out of Ozone Park, New York, with just 42,000 original miles. This is a one-owner car. And it's a no reserve auction. So I, it's just really a lot. I'm, I'm happy that Doug DeMiro has this car. This is the car for them. A uh, few things uh, about the Chevrolet Impala SS. Uh, so they have a 5.7 liter V8. It's a limited slip differential with sports suspension. We're talking 260 horsepower and 330 pounds foot of torque. It's channeled, unfortunately, through a crappy four speed automatic. But it's got four-wheel disc brakes, dual exhaust, and there's even a transmission cooler on this thing. By all accounts, JP, they really did throw a lot of love at this thing as far as making it mechanically high spec. Uh, and these cars have had a very strange cult following. In and around the Bay Area, the type of guy that drove a car like this either looked like a retired football player, a bouncer, or a drug dealer. That was mostly the crowd that you would see driving these cars. If one of these cars pulled up next to you with base emanating from the trunk and tinted windows, you didn't stare for a long time because you were scared somebody's going to roll down the window and look at you with a gold grill and go, would you look at that motherfucker? <laughs> it used to scare the shit out of me. These cars... Uh, we're driven by a ornery crowd in Northern California. I don't know what you fond memories of are of them are up in uh, the Seattle and Washington area, uh, but these cars are neat, and it wouldn't surprise me if they bring something close to collector money. Uh, so this car was at six thousand six hundred dollars last night, John, uh, but it's sitting at ten thousand five hundred right now, and I'm only going to laugh at myself because last night I wrote ten grand on the no reserve auction, and it's already at ten five. So I'll send it to you, and then I will abridge my guess. Uh, anyway, ever driven one of these things, or did you know somebody that owned one, uh, or did they look like football players drove these when you were growing up in Seattle? Um, make your guess quick, because I'm moving on from this car. I could. This is something that. Uh, bleh, bleh, I don't. I just. I hate this car. <laughs> what do you say with ever every fiber fiber of my being? This car. I mean, yeah. the only thing yes. that could be redeeming about this car would be <laughs> if it had one of those bench seats in the front. Where where instead, you know, right now <laughs> this actually has normal. Uh, A what do you call console. it? Yeah, so center seat. console, yeah. which is. Which sucks. I mean, this is the kind of car that you want that bench seat. You could have your best girl right next to you and your dog next to her uh, and cruise down the boulevard, I guess, and maybe do sick burnouts or something. I don't know. This yeah. is so stupid. But it doesn't even I, have that, so I don't know what you get out yeah. of this car. I'd be willing to bet this car is basically cop spec, but they badged it an SS and then sold all this stuff they made for police cars uh, mm -hmm. to the public because the sports suspension and the transmission cool. These are probably all things that went on police cruisers. 
Uh, but in any case, this car is going to find a home because it's a no reserve auction, JP. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, $14,000 brings home the Chevrolet SS one owner car out of Ozone Park, New York. There are a lot of bids for cars and bids. That's kind of crazy. When was the last time someone bid on it? Two hours ago. Yeah, I'm going to say 11.5. I don't think it makes... I mean, cars and bids just doesn't get late stage rallies very often, especially on something weird like this. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, moving on. All right. Let's jump to a car you are going to love, JP. Check out this gray market, unobtainium. Just, wow, I love this thing. Out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada is a 1992 Porsche 911 Carrera RS. But this particular example, JP, has option code M003, which translates to club sport. So you basically take an RS and you add lightness uh, in the fact that this car, uh, of course, does not have AC, does not have a sunroof, does not have carpet or send sound deadening. Uh, this car does have a roll cage and probably uh, room for a fire system. The Club Sport was basically a homologation special so that you could take this car from Vysok uh, to your delivery center and then take it immediately to the racetrack and be competitive. These are legendary cars. I don't know how many RSs they made, but it was probably a couple hundred. Uh, and they probably only made, you know, a couple of dozen Club Sports. So this is the rarest of the rare, the most extreme of the extreme. Now, RSs that came out of Vysok uh, look like 964 coupes, but let's start with a seam-welded chassis. Uh, this car had Recaro seats. The wheels look like cups, but they're actually made of uh, magnesium and not aluminum. Uh, the brakes are the spec from the turbo uh, a model. They had lightweight flywheels. And the list of modifications to this car goes on and on and on. Shorter shift, thicker steering wheel, quicker steering ratio, uh, hard mounted uh, engine mounts. Uh, even the, the brake pads and the brake fluid are for high temp and racing. Uh, every single part on this car has been modified slightly from the standard road versions to make these all around better track cars. And somehow these narrow body cars on skinny wheels are one of the best handling, best driving 911 air-cooled of all time. And it is absolutely one of my favorite cars. I cannot say enough nice things about it. And to make all of this stuff more special, consider this. JP, car, our car has a documented 2,000 kilometers, meaning this car is basically brand new with 1,200 miles uh, in translation. Uh, last night, JP, I thought this car would sell for $350,000. Uh, and it has jumped overnight from 300 grand to 340 and still has an hour to go. I think my early bid, which I'm not going to stand by, uh, is in serious jeopardy of being broken. Uh, this car is probably going to set a kind of contemporary record. Now, these cars were trading for 400,000 plus a few years ago, but they softened up. This one, however, is going to bring serious money. We could be looking at a half million dollar car here when it's all said and done. Uh, is this one of your favorite Porsches, or am I stand alone in that and saying 964 Cup cars and RS cars are one of the best ever 911s? Absolutely the best. The best, the best, the best. Uh, I was just talking to our friend Jeff Chu yesterday yep. at a car show in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, he doesn't have an air-cooled car. He has Ferraris and Lamborghinis yeah. and McLarens. And uh, and he does have yep. Porsches. You know, he's got a GT3 RS. Uh, he, you know, he's, he's into this stuff. But he doesn't have an air-cooled car. And we're sitting there having a conversation about what car would he want to add to his collection that is air cooled and the 964 is definitely the one that came up and it's like hmm maybe this is the 964 for him Absolutely. although if it's gonna you know it's already at 350,000 bucks we are already talking about numbers that might be a little steep for even him uh but oh, this I would be it. the car this would be the car <laughs> Jeff could sell two of his watches, still have too many watches, and have this car in his garage. That is a good uh, point. Yeah. So absolutely. where's it going to land? So, JP, again, I thought 350 because it was at like 300, 310 overnight. I've been watching this car since it first came on uh, because it, this is like, to me, this is arguably the most iconic Porsche. This and a 73 RS, I think, are, are, are two of the truest, best driver cars that have ever come out of uh, not even – you know, uh, Stuttgart, but really Weissach. Mm -hmm. uh, I, man, 350 is not going to do it. I, I'm going to say $400,000, JP, and I, mm -hmm. I feel good about that. This, I think this car is getting the love. Not a lot of bids, but I, it's, it's evident to me that people realize and appreciate just how special 
and rare this particular car is. And so 400 grand is my guess, JP. What do you think? Over or under? I've got a weird theory right now. Well, it's not even a theory, but it's just like, it feels like 964s have just have a had a, you know, they're taken off like a rocket, right? The values right. just keep going up and up and up and up. On the regular ones, like a common 964 yeah. two-door, uh, obviously they're all two-door, but, uh, you yeah. know, a C2 manual right. that you used to be able to get for $35,000 all day long is now worth 60 to 80, you know? So right. it's, it's nuts, Or more. Right? Yeah. Or yeah, more. Right. But yeah, right. the But the really special ones, ones like this like speedsters like you know the one we talked about even the rsas um uh-huh. they don't seem to be going up the wide bodies they're they're, they're about what they've always been worth in that right. you know like an rsa that speedster yesterday uh, or friday you know that was that got bid yeah. up to what 130 um, 139 failed to sell yeah in triple i mean black. it's like that's that that's what that car is worth and and okay well if a regular 964 that was 30 or 40 is now 80. Shouldn't a speedster be 220 or 250? Yeah. Shouldn't this car yeah. be half a million? We, I, I don't think we, it is. I'm betting the need, other. I'm going to say 390. Okay. We need Paul from Metal Kennel to come back on and help us uh, make sense of this very strange market because, JP, I'd say you have a point. Maybe it's not as extreme as you say, but I'd say in general, from a broad stroke, uh, I agree with your, uh, you know, your take on the market for the 964s. The really special ones. Uh, aren't bringing the crazy collector money, but the the floor has definitely risen, and maybe we haven't grown into the blue sky. But this car, if it gets to 390, or if it gets to 400 or more, um, that could certainly uh, that will spark colors interest in the yeah. up special 964s. And I, as a bid nerd, that we get more unusual 964 come market because I love these cars. I yeah. absolutely love these cars. So, anyways go that'll be a fun one to watch it'd probably be worth watching and jp let me remind our audience uh that this car has just four four minutes to go out of edmonton canada again this is a 25 year car people to be very easy to bring into the united states all right jp our last car of the day also on bring a trailer and this is a las vegas special in fact it's possible right right now there's a modified 1967 toyota land cruiser fj40 with soft top this is a no reserve auction. Uh, true mileage unknown on this uh, Heap JP. It has a replacement odometer. Uh, it has a rebuilt motor. Uh, the got some upgrades to the motor. It's a 4.2 liter inline six. The uh, the vulnerable 2F inline six. Uh, four speed manual, dual transfer cases. Uh, it's painted white, but the paint there's barely any paint left. It's so weathered. Um, they even rebuilt the wench on this thing. Uh, mods uh, abound on this car, and I don't really want to bore our, our over them. Needless to say, has been and enjoyed this car, and so I would I would guess that all the mods on this car help it do what it was meant to do, which is go out into places where the road is not safe, and you can safely go out there and come back. Uh, a really neat car that even has air conditioning, um, and I dig the weathered look. Uh, you and I are both huge fans of old car patina, and this one's got one. I would not ever want to clean this car up. I would just want to make sure it was uh, reliable and bulletproof as it should be so that you could just go out and enjoy it and make it home safely. So here comes down the pike a no-reserve 67 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 on a no reserve auction that is probably going to wind up being a pretty decent value for somebody. JP, tell us why there's a lot to love here. I mean, if you're in the desert, heck yeah, this is the way to go. Um, one thing that's kind of surprising me, you know, we always talk about cabrios and I make the joke of cabrio phobes and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, it's odd to me that their leading pictures are with the top on uh, because right. there's one thing about coupes and I agree, even as a person who prefers cabs over yeah. coupes, um, I agree that coupes generally look better when the, you know, especially with the top up uh, coupes just have better lines. Um, whereas with, off-road vehicles if it's a convertible like a jeep or a land cruiser like this or you know a a bronco or any of those types of cars they look way better with the top off i mean the tops on always look really really stupid you know on a land rover defender they always look really cool when the top's (laughs) down and the windshield's folded down so here are a couple of pictures of the same vehicle with no top and now all of a sudden i love this thing with the top on i'm kind of like god that thing just looks terrible um even even though i love patina even though i love all that kind of weathered stuff it looks you know this vehicle does look 
so badass. I think they should have taken it the <laughs> next step and put the windshield down because uh, that would have really made it look cool. But there yeah, it is with yeah. the top on and the doors yeah. on. It really looks ridiculous. The proportions are all off, and it's just, you know, the, the, the rungs that hold the, the, the canvas up in the back, they just look like a you know circus tent on wheels. It's just the proportions. <laughs> the door just looks, I mean, look at the size of that door. It's just ridiculous, yeah. right? But here it is yeah. without the roof and without the doors. And it's like, yeah, that's a place I want to be. Um, yeah. It makes the world into an amusement park ride when you have something that's yeah. this open. Um, it is interesting to note without the uh, without the roof and the top and the doors on that this is a vehicle that does not have a roll cage so even if your roof is yeah. on uh you're you doing are. some serious off-road stuff if you roll this thing over uh you're in trouble this is a big yeah. problem which honestly i'm fine with uh you know because a lot of defenders of the era don't have any or not defenders but uh, series two land rovers don't have right. uh, roll bars uh you know my volkswagen thing that i had for years didn't have a roll <laughs> bar and you know it, it's terrible but you just got to watch out oh look so this does have the doors that has the windows that come off too, the the removable doors and the removable windows. But Land Cruiser always did this weird thing where they didn't have the notch in the door that made it even with the with the side. It's just like this <laughs> this slab of sheet metal that you just bolted to the side, and it's the proportional all goofy. But here it is with the windshield down. I mean, I wish there were more pictures with the windshield down, that, no doors. Yeah. Uh, that would be so dope out in the desert. Instead, they got all this stupid canvas everywhere. Um, this one does have some really cool like mechanical upgrades in it is goofy and put yeah. it out as it looks. It does not appear to be rusty at all. This thing looks solid yeah. as can be. Uh, where's it? Where's it? Where is it from a price point of view at this point? How many bids do we have and where's it going to land? $15,000 on just five bids, but it is on bring a trailer and it is a no reserve auction. So I, I, I GP, I wrote $22,000 last night. Um, I, I don't mean, I really don't know where these things should be. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do one thing. I'm gonna take two grand off my bid and just go twenty thousand uh, dollars wins this lot. But I, I really guess it because I don't know the vehicles as well as you do. Oh, so hey, what year is this think? again? This is a sixty-seven. It's an sixty-seven. Early one. Okay, it's an early yeah. one. Yeah, I mean, it should definitely bring some money. But I think it's, I mean, and it's because. Uh, I mean, looking at how many bids there have been, there's very low bid volume. I frankly think that these pictures are hurting this vehicle. Uh, this is a romantic, romantic car. This is something you got to sell how much fun this thing is. And looking at it with the patina and the and the top, even though the top is in perfect condition, uh, with the top on, this thing just looks like a pile of junk. Driving down the road, this thing looks like a Whoop. rust bucket piece of crap. If they had Wait. taken, what's that? Go ahead. Where's the photo, JP, that this guy drove the car up to Mount Charleston, got off the paved road and onto a dirt road, and took a photo overlooking Clark County on top of Mount Charleston or wherever in Las yeah. Vegas with this thing in the foreground and, and Clark County and the Vegas Strip in the in the background? I, I yeah. just... It, I agree with you. There, there, there's not enough fun factor photos. Mm -hmm. He's just documenting the, uh, the car, and the car's kind of a piece of junk. So, yeah. To find this photo... Uh, you have to dig through all the photos. You have to go past the receipts. You got to go yeah. past all the photos the underneath the thing. Uh, and then you find this one shot that's like, oh, yeah. my God, that's so dope. Uh, I, I don't think people get there. Yeah. I think they just glance over this. Oh, that's a beater one. It's not a nice one. Even I was like, oh, this is just a beater one. What is this even doing here? And now after digging through it, it's like, oh, wait, this really is a bitching one. Um, so there might be there might be a yeah. steal to be had here. Um, you know, I would love yeah, to get this car for so. a good, good rate. Uh, and since it's in town, I'm going to be looking at it, uh, and maybe, and go take some proper photo photos of it. Uh, this yeah. would be an awesome rig. So yeah. Um, and the, bid the bid nerds might bring one to market in the next couple of weeks too. We have access yeah. to one that we might represent. So let's see. And the question is, it'll, will it be this one? Uh, all right. So what <laughs> is, where's it going to land? I say 20 grand JP. What do you say? It's at 15 with uh let me just give you the time jp so you know uh four and a half hours to go in las vegas it's at 15 right now but it's a no reserve auction keep that in mind uh i'm gonna go 18.5 um and say it's worth a lot more uh yep. but uh, i don't think it finds it because i think this ad is so terrible that it's just uh, there you go so, yeah it's too bad or it. maybe it's awesome maybe it's an opportunity i'm excited 
All right, guys. Well, there it is. That, that's all five cars of the day. Those were the that's most it. interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids. Bring a trailer and peak our market. Uh, later this week, we'll hopefully have some cars from uh, Rad for sale. Uh, maybe Hemmings and maybe uh, maybe some other auction site that might pop up. Uh, we do this every Monday through Friday. If you want to check out the cars that we've talked about, uh, go ahead and look in our uh, in the description of the video below. We have links to all these cars. Uh, we always do that every day so that you can check the cars that we were talking about and see what the most interesting cars of the day. Uh, hey, do us a solid other than, you know, if you have, if you've already subscribed, if you already hit the like button, if you already hit the notification button, you've done all those things, here's what could really help us out. Go on, bring a trailer, go on cars and bids and comment in the comment sections about the cars that we talk about. Say, Hey, the bid nerds talked about this car. This is this is a this is a pick of the day for the bid nerds. We can't it's do a great it because idea. they'll they'll kick yeah. us off of there because we're promoting it. But if one of you guys do it, uh, it really helps us out. Yeah. So go on the comment yeah. sections of the cars that we've talked about and talk about the fact that the bid nerds talked about these cars. That would be yeah. really awesome if we could see that happen more often. Uh, so yeah. there it is, Monday through Friday and, and at be, nine o'clock. There'll be swag. We, we will bribe you with swag. Yeah, so we'll definitely please. send some yeah, swag for means. folks that do that for us. Uh, all yeah, right, we'll be, be back. Uh, be back here tomorrow at the nine o'clock hour. We've got five more cars. We'll go over our predictions from today. See how we did. Um, make sure oh, you, uh, I can like tell you right now. I crushed yeah. you today. I crushed oh, you today. Okay. You yeah, say he's yeah. crushing you today. All right. Well, you did have a, you did have a complete sweep last week of one day, which is one of the first times that's ever happened. And yet we still, at the end of the week, wound up being even. So, uh, know, let's bad. see, let's see how this works out. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. We will see you tomorrow. For bid nerds. Nerd! Oh, yeah.